Angular velocity, the origin. Where did it come from? Who thought about it? And my favorite word and science's favorite word, why? I am about to display a picture which I have already showed you before in relative motion when I explain to you velocity of approach and velocity of separation. Try to recall. In ground frame, consider two particles A and B with their own velocities VA bar and VB bar in random direction. Okay? I am not biased towards any direction. Step 1. In ground frame, there are two particles A and B with their listed velocities VA and VB. Point taken. Resolve the velocities along the x-axis and y-axis and guess what? Choose the x-axis or one of the axis as the line joining them. That's a compulsion. So, I made, I resolved the velocity of A and B along the line joining them and perpendicular to the line joining them. So far, so good. Good. So, if you ask me, what is the velocity VA vector? It is VA cos theta A i cap plus VA sin theta A j cap. What is velocity VB? VB cos theta B i cap plus VB sin theta B j cap. So far, is there any problem? No. Do you remember this diagram? What was the next step? The next step is the observer who is standing on the ground and looking at both of them. Right? The frame was ground. Now the observer will be on A and looking at B. That means go into A frame. If you go into A frame, clearly the velocity of B in A frame will be simply equal to VB minus VA. Right? What was VB equal to guys? VB was equal to VB cos theta b i cap plus v b sin theta b j cap v a was v a cos theta a i cap plus v a sin theta a j cap if you subtract it the i cap component would be v b cos theta b minus v b v a cos theta a and the j cap component would be v b sin theta b minus v a sin theta a. Is this clear so far? Take your call. Easy. No problem. You have done this before. We have seen this in relative motion. Take a call. So far it's fine. So you are on a, the observer. We are observer. Why not? We are looking at b from a. Sure. Look at the two components. This component is VBA perpendicular. Why? Because it is perpendicular to BA. The other one is the component which is parallel to BA. Do you recall this component? VBA parallel which was nothing but the rate at which the BA changes, isn't it, was nothing but velocity of separation or the velocity of approach. VBA parallel, the relative velocity component along the line joining them is nothing but the rate at which their separation changes. If the separation increases, it's the velocity of separation. If the separation decreases, it's the velocity of approach. Do you recall this? Sure? Yes, sir, we recall this. What's the point? The point is, my lord, I left the VBA perpendicular component. And today, today, I will do justice to it. Suppose after a fraction of time, fraction of time, uh, dt time, where will this particle be? This particle v will be somewhere, will be somewhere over here. That means if I join A with B again, this will be the line joining them. Obviously, the separation might have increased and the angle has changed. 
who is responsible to increase the separation in other words if this position if ab value has increased to ab dash who is responsible to increase the value mm, vba parallel but who is responsible for this angle who changed the angle who changed the angle of the line joining them with respect to the reference axis if i choose this as my reference axis who is responsible for this d theta in dt time who is responsible for this d theta by dt my lord clearly who is responsible for this d theta by dt responsibility is taken by vba perpendicular VBA perpendicular is the reason why d theta by dt happened. And what is d theta by dt? d theta by dt is omega. Isn't it? Yes or no? So far, I have not dropped any math for you. I am just talking qualitative. Omega. By definition, d theta by dt is omega. So guess what? A. Angular velocity is a concept, not a private property of circular motion. Circular motion is a very special case in which angular velocity is understood. Point number one. Is that sorted? Where is the circular motion here? Nowhere. Two particles A and B nicely moving along with their velocities A and B separately. But when I saw other guy with, with respect to one, I could see that the relative velocity can be resolved in two components. One along the line joining them, one perpendicular. So, sir, do you mean that circular motion, what we studied is wrong? No, 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 no. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that the circular motion we studied is a very special case of what I'm about to tell you. But, sir, then why did you teach that first and not this first? Because the progress of science lies in going backwards. You see something, you observe it, you theorize it, hypothesize it, experiment it and then develop into a formula and a concept. First, circular motion was an easy observation. It was a nice easy way to blend you in, to initiate you. And now, let's go further. Got it? But then, what would this be equal to? This would be equal to VBA perpendicular upon BA. And not just that. Whose omega is this? This is omega of B as seen by A. So the parent definition, parent definition of omega is goes, it goes like this. Omega of a particle B as seen by particle A is nothing but relative velocity component of them perpendicular to line joining them upon the length of line joining them. Relative velocity component perpendicular to line joining them upon the line joining them. So guys, there are two components, VBA parallel, VBA perpendicular. What does VBA parallel do? It increases distance. What does VBA perpendicular do? It changes the angle. And that rate of change in angle is called angular velocity. For more videos and live lectures on the JEE, click on the subscribe button now.